spheres, cones, and cylinders, and we're looking mainly at compound shapes. So let's go through how we solve these, and remember the methods we're gonna use, we're gonna draw them out separately, write all the formulas, and use substitution. It's gonna be really logical, and we're gonna set everything in stone, okay? So here we go. Question one. So a maxi core consists of a cone full of ice cream with a hemisphere of ice cream on top. The radius of the hemisphere is free, okay? So let's start by when we read the question, we write down everything we know. The radius of the hemisphere is free, okay? Uh, the radius of the base of the cone is also free, which we would expect. The height of the cone is 10, so we know this is our height. It says calculate the total volume of ice cream in maxi cool. Give your answers correct to three significant figures. Okay, so the total volume is the two shapes added together. So I have a sphere and a cone. Okay, and we're looking at volume. So, step one, we go to the front of our booklet and we find the, um, what are they called? Formulas. So, volume of a hemisphere. So, in our formula sheet, it gives us the volume of a whole sphere. However, we have half. So, what are we going to do? Divide by two. Then we need to add on the volume of a cone. Now, we have a whole cone. So, we're just going to write down the volume. We don't need to worry about anything else. Okay, so we've drawn pictures. We've separated it. We have our volume. This is step one and two and three. Step four. Now we know our height is 10. So this is this height here, isn't it? We're going to match up everything we know. We have our radius of our hemisphere is free. And the radius of the cone, which it also told us, is also free. And that goes with the cone. So do I have any variables missing? No. I have all the information I need. Now it's just a case of substitution and then using my calculator. So four over three times pi times three cubed all divided by two plus a third lots times pi times three squared multiplied by our height of 10. Now, as you can see, when I've used substitution, I've always substitute in using brackets. I would suggest getting familiar with doing this because when we come to the harder questions and we have to use um, algebra, this is really going to help us. So now I can put this all into my calculator. So we know for this one we're going to have 18 pi and we are going to keep this in terms of pi. And then for the next one we're going to have 30 pi. This gives me a total of 48 pi. Now, I'm always going to write it exact and then go back to the question and see what it said. Now, the question says, give your answer correct to three significant figures. So, 48 pi, correct to three significant figures, is 150.796 dot dot dot. Three significant figures. Third significant figure is units. So, we're rounded to the nearest unit, which is 151 centimetres cubed because we're looking at volume question two a solid is made from a cylinder and a hemisphere the cylinder has radius 1.5 okay so radius 1.5 and height four the hemisphere has radius 1.5 okay work out the total volume again what a lovely question so when we do this, we write down everything we know. If we're working out volume, what are we going to do? The hemisphere plus the volume of the cylinder, and we're going to add them, aren't we? Okay? Now, we're going to have our formula. So, here we go. Uh, hemisphere, 4 over 3, pi r cubed, and we're going to divide it by 2 because it's half. Cylinder, the volume is pi r squared h. We're going to do the same process again. Radius of the sphere, hemisphere is 1.5. The height of the cylinder and the radius 
Okay, do we have all the information that we need? Yes. We can now continue with the rest of the question. So I'm going to write this now again and use substitution. Okay, now remember there are easier ways to do this and there are different ways to do this. However, we're sticking with this way for the moment. Okay? So we're going to have 3 over 2 times pi plus 9 pi. So 3 over 2 plus 9 pi is 21 over 2 pi. Again, three significant figures, which is going to be 32.986, which is going to give me three significant figures as one decimal place. So this is actually going to give me 33.0. Now, this answer is completely wrong because actually, and this is such an easy mistake, this should be a cubed. So even though I've done all of my work and I've got the answer wrong, I would still get method marks for this. Okay, so this is incorrect. Okay, I should have cubed it. It's a silly mistake. However, it does happen. It is common. So... What we should have got was, uh, so this should have been 9 over 4 pi plus 9 pi. Um, and then SD, this is going to give me 35.3 to three significant figures and we're centimetres cubed. Right, question three is slightly different this time. Um, so we need to read the question. It says, the diagram shows a shape made from a solid cylinder and a solid hemisphere. The cylinder has a radius of 3.4. So we know our radius is 3.4. The, the length is 8.3, so that's like our height. And it says the hemisphere has a radius, so my hemisphere also has a radius of 3.4. Now, just to point out, if they are connected exactly, they, they should both have the same radius, okay? So if it doesn't give you that and they're exactly connected, it will have. However, this time it says calculate the total surface area. So when I think of the surface of this area, what surfaces do I have? First of all, I have the hemisphere surface, yeah, which is here this part. I then have the curved surface area of the cylinder, don't I? Okay, so this part here is the curved surface area of the cylinder. And then the last surface I have is the bottom of the cylinder, this circle here. This is the bottom of the cylinder, is it not? If you think about my surface, if I was to wrap around this, these are my three surfaces, my three faces of the shape. So, now we get surface area. Hemisphere surface area. The surface area of the hemisphere is given to me by 4 pi r squared is the surface area of the whole sphere. What do I need to do if I have half a sphere? Half it. Surface area of the... Um, curved face we know is our radius 2 pi r multiplied by a length h and then area of a circle pi r squared so there we go we've now written our formula we've drawn our shapes written our formula and we know we need to add them together because these are the three faces now we've done this, we know, do we have R and H? Yep, yeah, so we're going to substitute everything in. 4 over 2 is in fact 2, so 2 pi times 3.4 squared plus 2 pi times 3.4 times our height of 8.3 plus pi lots of R, which is 3.4 squared. Okay, I'm now going to put this into my calculator. 
Okay, so this gives me 2,278 divided by 25 pi, which equals 286.26. Three significant figures is 286 surface area centimeters squared. Okay, question four. Calculate the total surface area. Give this a go. So, um, once we've read the diagram, it shows a shape made from a solid cube. What do we know about cubes? They have six faces and all the dimensions are the same. Okay, all the lengths are the same. And then it tells us the cubes have lengths of 8.7. Perfect, and it's written on there. The cylinder has a radius of 2.7. Okay. So we know my radius is 2.7, okay? And we know this is like my length, isn't it? And it has a height of 4.9. So the first thing I've done is I've made sure everything that's written here is on here, on the diagram. So let's calculate the total surface area. So surface area means the physical faces I can now see. So I'm going to break this down. We know a cube has six faces, right? So six faces, one, two, and then three and then that side and that side and then obviously the top side okay so essentially i can now draw here are my six faces so i've got 8.7 8.7 and so i need to do 8.7 times 8.7 to get the area of a single face so 8.7 times 8.7 is 75.69 and then i'm going to multiply that by six why because I have six faces. Perfect. So I now have 454.14 centimetres squared. However, what do we notice about the face on the top? It has a circle missing out of it. So we're going to have to minus the circle. For some of you, you wouldn't have noticed that because you would have gone straight to this and you would have missed it. This is why we start with knowing exactly what we're going to do. So ideally, we should do this. We're going to have area of this multiplied by 6 minus the area of the circle, because then that would account for this part here. We need to take away the area of this circle, don't we? Then we're going to have to add on, okay, because this is the part we need to take away, the part that we can't see here. Then we need to add on the curved surface area of the cylinder. Okay? So the cylinder, I just want the curved bit. So that's why I'm just going to draw it like that. Then, on top of that, I then need to add on... I now need to add on the... Um, oh, the top of the cylinder. And then I've covered every surface. Okay? What we now find, guys, is without me even having to work out area of a circle, I can actually, minus a circle plus a circle means I don't even need to use them. So, in actual fact, all I need is six lots of my rectangle plus the curved surface area of a cylinder. Six lots of the rectangle we know is, um, not the rectangle, the square, is base times height times six. Plus, the curved surface area of a cylinder we know is 2 pi r h. Now, lucky for us, I've already worked out this here. So then we're going to have um, 2 pi r h is 2 times pi times 2.7 times 4.9. So this is going to give me 83.1265 dot dot dot. I'm going to add it on to 5. Uh, sorry, 454.14. So when I add the two together, so I'm going to have 454.14 plus 83.1265. I'm going to get a total answer of 537.266. Three second figures is 537. Surface area is centimeters squared. Okay, question five. Now, this one, I really like this style of question because this actually brings together why we've been doing our diagrams and number sentences and substitution. And this is why. 
First of all, what does anyone notice about the question? They haven't given us any numbers, have they? We are going to be working purely with algebra right now. So, here we go. The cone has a height, H. Perfect. Have they written that on there? Yeah. And then it says the radius of the base of the cone. So, the radius of the cone. The radius of the cone is three times the radius of the sphere. However, did they give us the radius of the sphere? Okay, so let's say the radius of the sphere is x then. The radius of the cone is three times as big. It's going to be 3x, absolutely. Okay, so we've written all the information down that we have, and the information we didn't have, we then started writing. And now it says, given that the volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the cone. Okay, so these two volumes, the sphere equals the cone. And we're dealing with volume. So I'm going to get my go to the volume sheet. And we have a whole sphere. So volume of the sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And this equals the volume of the cone, which is a third pi r squared h. So all I've done now is written this sentence in a mathematical way, diagrammatically as well as a number sentence. It then says, find an expression for the radius of the sphere in terms of h. If we want an expression for the radius, what this means is, at the end of the question, it wants us to have r equals. Okay? Whatever we've decided our radius is, that's what it wants. It wants our radius equals something. So, step one. We're going to highlight everything we know. The radius of the sphere we've written as x. So that's going to go here, isn't it? The height of the cone we've put in blue. So that's blue. And then the radius of the cone we've said is 3x. So that's going to go here. So can you see how I've now matched up the correct radius to everything? Okay, this is to make it easier for you to see. So let's start working this out. So 4 over 3 times pi times r, which we know is x cubed. I always substitute first. This equals a third pi. What's our radius of our cone? 3x, all squared, multiplied by our height, which is in fact h. Okay, now I've written this number sentence. I can simplify both sides, okay? So we're going to get 4 over 3 pi x cubed equals a third pi times. Now, 3x all squared is, in fact, 9x squared times h, okay? Now, because we're just dealing with algebra and pi's and fractions, this is why I'm going to take each step slow. However, a lot of this I would probably skip through. So, first of all, let's... Can we simplify this side anymore? This is as simple as we get it, so we just leave it. However, can we simplify this side anymore? A third times nine. We can simplify the numbers, yes? So, third times nine is three pi x squared h, and we still have four over three pi x cubed on this side, okay? So, technically, this side is 4 over 3 times pi times x cubed, and this side is 3 times pi times x squared times h. They both have a factor of pi. So, I can divide both sides by pi. So, pi is now cancelled from both sides. And this only works because we're multiplying on both sides. Now, um, x cubed and x squared, I can multiply both sides by, divide both sides by x squared. So x squared comes away from here and our x cubed divided by x squared is just x. So now I have four over three x equals three h. 
Now, remember in the question, we wanted our radius equals, and we'd, we'd already said it earlier, our radius is x, right? So we want x equals. So now, how do I get x on its own? I'm going to divide both sides by 4 over 3. Or we could time both sides by 3 and then divide both sides by 4. However you want to look at it. So that means x equals 9 over 4 h. And there is the final answer. So just to say, for those of you who struggled with this line going down, all I'm doing here is algebra manipulation. I'm dividing both sides, multiplying both sides. There are a few different ways to do this, okay? This is just one method. However, the other way you can look at it is if you've got this equals this, we want x equals. How would you rearrange this to get x equals? Question six. The diagram. Question six. The diagram shows two short solid shapes, A and B. Shape A is made of a hemisphere and a cone. Shape B is a cylinder. For shape A, the radius is 36. The radius of the base of the cone is also 36. And the height is 53. For shape B, the radius of the cylinder is R. And the height is 2R. The volumes are equal to each other. Okay? So, let's do one shape at a time. Shape A. What is the volume of A? It's half a hemisphere plus a cone. Okay? So, volume of a hemisphere. 4 over 3 pi r cubed is the volume of a sphere. We're going to divide it by 2. Plus the volume of a cone a third pi r squared h. We now have our numbers. r is 36, so everywhere there's an r, what am I going to substitute in? 36, and h is 53. So in my calculator, I'm going to have 4 over 3 pi times 36 cubed divided by 2 plus a third lot of pi times 36 squared multiplied by my height of 53. This is going to give me a total volume of, which gives me 54,000 pi. Perfect. That's step one done. We've worked out the volume of A. Now, I want you to try the same thing again with shape B. Okay, so break it up into shapes and give this a go. For the second part of this question, we need to find the volume of a cylinder. Now, so for shape B, what is the volume of a cylinder? It's given to us by pi r squared h. Now, what is our radius? It is r. Okay, so we're going to put, substitute r here. What is our height? 2r. So here I'm going to substitute in 2r. So that means pi lots of r squared lots of 2r. This is going to give me pi times r squared times 2r, which is 2 pi r cubed. Okay? Now, we're now saying that the two volumes are equal. So, 54,000 pi equals 2 pi r cubed. Okay, because we have two exact things equal each other, I can divide both sides by pi. I can divide by both sides now by 2. What's 54,000 divided by 2? 26,000. Is it 27? 27,000 equals r cubed. So how do I find r? Cube root. 27,000, which... So the cubed root of 27,000 is 30. So r equals 30. Now, we're not finished there. We always go back to the question. The question said, calculate the height of the shape. Our height is two lots of the radius. So our height equals two lots of 30. Our height equals 60 centimetres. If you did not calculate the height, you would have lost the mark. Well done. Okay, question 11. The diagram shows a cylinder and a solid sphere. The cylinder has a radius of r and the sphere has a radius of r. 
given that the total surface area of the cylinder divided by the surface area of the sphere equals 2, find the vo volume of the cylinder divided by the volume of the sphere. Okay, so this is what we've been given first. So let's do this. The total surface area of the cylinder, okay? So I'm going to call this A. Surface area of a cylinder we know is, this is H, this is R, and the volume is 2 pi R squared plus 2 pi R H. Now, they haven't given us any numbers, so we just know it's R and H. This is just the total surface area of the cylinder. Done. Okay, the next shape, let's call this B. The total surface area of the sphere, so remember this is A, total surface area of the sphere is given to us 4 pi R squared. Okay? Now, we know that the surface area of the cylinder, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, divided by 4 pi r squared equals 2. If you write this, you're going to get one mark. And all we've done, we haven't actually done any mathematics yet, really, have we? we all we've done is write formulas. Okay. Now... This is algebraic fractions. Now think about this. We can cancel a common factor from everything. So, how many terms do I have on my numerator? I have two. I have this term. And I have this term. Okay? And then you know when we are cancelling fractions... I have to have a common factor in each term. I've technically got two terms on my numerator, one term on my denominator. So, 2 pi r squared, 2 pi r h, 4 pi r squared, do they have a common factor? Yeah. They all have a common factor of 2. Okay? So, if I divide everything by 2, I'm left with 1, 1, and this becomes a 2. Okay. Do they have another common factor? Yeah. What do they have? Pi. So, I could divide everything by pi... Okay, I'm left with 1, 1, 1. But this is, remember, this is multiplied. Okay. Do they have another common factor? R. So this becomes 1. This R disappears. This becomes 1. So in fact, I am left with R plus H divided by 2R. And this equals 2. I've simplified this fraction down. Okay. So now we're going to multiply both sides by 2R. R plus H equals 4R. H equals 3R. So we now know what H equals. What does H equal? 3R. 3R. Three lots of the radius. Okay? So now that we have that, we're now able to move on with the rest of the question. So now that I have what h equals, the rest of the question is easy because this is what we were missing earlier. The height equals now 3r. So now find the, val of the volume of the cylinder. Volume of a cylinder is? Uh, pi, r times height. pi r squared times height divided by the volume of a sphere, which is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. However... We know what is our h equal to, because we've just worked it out. We're going to get pi r squared, lots of 3r, over 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So now on my numerator, I'm going to have um, pi r squared times 3r is 3 pi r cubed over 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now, how many terms do I have on my numerator? One. How many terms do I have on my denominator? One. So I can just do straight cancelling now. Okay? So, um, do they have anything in common? What do they have? Pi and R. Pi. So I can divide numerator and denominator by pi. Anything else? Pi R cubed. Okay, so you know this is leaving me with ones. So I now actually have... 4 divided by 4 over 3 is what's left. 4 divided by 4 over 3 is 4 times 3 over 4. 
sorry. Three divided by four over three, which is three times three over four, which is nine over four. So the volume is actually nine over four. It doesn't tell us centimeters. Nine over four units cubed. If it doesn't tell us the units, we can just write units cubed because we're doing volume, aren't we? Okay, so there we have it. Now, we've used algebra, we've used substitution, we've used algebraic fractions, and this cancelling method might be new to some of us. I am, we are going to be doing this next week.